Hello everyone. This week's lab is going to be the pendulum lab. So, we know that for a pendulum with a small angle and a simple pendulum, the period equals 2 pi times the square root L over G, where L is the length of the pendulum. So, for our first part, we want to analyze if that actually works and how well, how accurate that equation works. So, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and set it up like so. We need to have the string hanging down and we need the brass bob right here. So what we, what we need though is the length of the pendulum. When we put the bob on here, the length of the pendulum is going to be the length of the string plus the length of the hook. And because we assume that all the mass is located right at the center of the cylinder, we're going to assume that the length of the pendulum is the length of the string plus the length of the hook plus half the length of the cylinder. So, once we do that, we can go ahead and we know L because we can measure it, and we're going to find and we're going to record the period T. How we do that is we go ahead and take the photo gate right here, and we're going to set it to pendulum mode. We're going to take a protractor to make sure we're doing it less than 10 degrees, and then we're going to let it go, and the and the sorry, the photo gate will calculate the period for us. So once we have that, we're going to do eight different lengths to get eight different periods. So then we can move the string, decrease the length a little bit, put it up some more, record the period again, and we want to do this eight different times. So we want eight trials. So we need eight lengths, which will give us eight periods. Once we have that, how we're going to test it is we're going to graph the following. We want to graph the period squared versus L, the effective length of the pendulum. Okay. So, this works, and this equation is good for small angles and simple pendulums. But, why doesn't it work for larger angles? Well, that's what we'll figure out in part two. So, in part two, what we'll do is instead of changing the length and seeing how the period changes, we're going to keep the length constant. So once we have that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the amplitude of oscillation. So we're going to put the protractor, and the first angle we want to do is 10 degrees, about. So go ahead and find theta, 10 degrees, OK? Yet again, we're going to use the protractor this time and put it at 20 degrees, let it go, and record the period that the photo gate gives us. We're going to do that for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up until 60 degrees, which is the, amp which is the largest amplitude we're going to. And we're going to say what the, uh, sorry, what the photo gate gives us for the period, which I'll call the experimental period. Okay. Because according to our small angle approximation, the period of a pendulum only depends on the length, which we actually did not change here. So theoretically, the period should be the same no matter what angle but that's not true. So how we're going to analyze that is we're going to calculate our theoretical period. Given our length, we can go ahead and calculate that. Then what we want to do is we want to analyze a couple things. So we want to find the difference between our experimental period and our theoretical period. So we want to subtract the theoretical from our experimental period. What we do then is we're going to graph this. We want to graph experimental minus theoretical versus theta, the amplitude of our oscillations. Then, given we have experimental and theoretical data, we're going to find the percent error and graph that versus the amplitude. So, that's it. To recap for part one and part two, for the first part, we're going to uh, record the length, record the period, change the length, and see how the period changes. For part two, we're keeping the length constant, and we're just changing the amplitude of the oscillation. And we're going to ex compare that to uh, the theoretical, the theoretical period we should get. Now, part three, the data is actually fairly simple. What we're going to do for this one is we're going to use a physical pendulum. So we're going to, for example, take this ruler, a metal ruler, and we're going to put it on here. What we're going to do is release this one 
at less than 10 degrees. And we're going to see exactly how much, uh, exactly what value the period is. Okay, go ahead and do that, and you're gonna do that 10 times. trials for that. Now, what we need is because this is a physical pendulum, because the mass is just distributed all throughout the, the pendulum instead of just at the very end, we're, this is actually called a physical pendulum. So the period equation is a little bit different. It's the period equals 2 pi times the square root of the moment of inertia divided by the mass, acceleration due to gravity, and the, uh, and the distance to the center of the mass. So this moment of inertia is about the pivot. So if I give you the length, width, height of the ruler and the mass of the ruler, you can find the you can find the uh, the moment of inertia about the hole, which is where it pivots about, and you can also find the distance from where it pivots about to the center of mass, which we'll assume is right in the center. So once you do that, you go ahead and analyze it. The data is relatively simple for this one. And the same one for part four. Now, for part four, what we're going to do is we're going to use the physical pendulum model again, but with the string. So we're going to take the string, like we had the brass bob earlier, take that off and put the wooden one on. The wooden bob is significantly less lighter, so we can't really assume it's a simple pendulum anymore. We have to assume it's a physical pendulum, in which case the mass is distributed all throughout it. So what we do with this one, as far as the data, is we're going to do the same thing as part one. We're going to find the, first off, you need to find the mass of the string, and you need to find the length of the string. So that way, you can find the, the linear mass density mu of the string. Once we have that, what we need to do is you need to go ahead and record the length and record the period and we want to do eight different lengths. So just like the first part, we want to go ahead and with the wooden one, we want to change the length, record the period, change the length, record the period. Once we have that, what we have to do is consider this yet again as a physical pendulum. So we need to find the moment of inertia about the pivot point. We need to find the mass of it using the linear mass density and the mass of the wooden bob. And we need to find the distance from the pivot to the center of mass of the system. So once we do that, you go ahead and answer the analysis questions. There's a lot to do with Excel in this one. Trust me, Excel helps a lot. So to recap for part one, we're using the brass bob and we're recording eight different lengths and eight periods, all less than 10 degrees. For part two, we're keeping the length constant using the brass bob and we're going 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees and recording the experimental period and comparing that with a the theoretical period. For part three, we're using a metal ruler as a physical pendulum. That way, what we're trying to do is we are trying, we uh, experimentally find the period and then we have to find the moment of inertia, mass, and distance to the center of mass. Using that, we can find an experimental G value which should be close to 9.81 because that's what the acceleration due to gravity is. Then for part four, we're doing the same thing as part one, except we're using the wooden bob and we're considering it as a physical pendulum. So you want eight lengths and eight different recorded periods. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know or Professor Bono or talk amongst your classmates. But yeah, that's the pendulum.